we should start uh, and today we uh, happy to have Nikita Nikrasov as a quantum particle he does not have a precise coordinate but technically he is at Simon Center for Geometry and Physics but now he, <laughs> he is overseas all right and his talk is toward left shot sim title is toward left shot symbols in field theory uh, Nikita thank you Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, well, it's nice to be back in, in, in Kansas. <laughs> you are not in Kansas Last anymore, you know. Yes. It's, <laughs> it's, uh, uh, it was, I mean, it's less windy now <laughs> than it was last time. Yeah. All right. Okay. So my talk is based on, on a few papers I, I wrote uh, a few years. Uh, so I in the last maybe three years. Uh, the recent two papers written together with Igor, uh, I mean, um, one of them, uh, so the first paper by myself, uh, and then the second was by Igor Kruchever, his student, uh, Anna Ilina, and the last one with Igor Kruchever, which we posted uh, in October. So let me try to start with something. Uh, pretty well known in the study of uh, exponential integrals where we integrate uh, say with some real manifold uh, with some measure which I denote schematically dx uh, an exponential function with a small parameter h bar and uh, that basically it's a very old subject uh, especially uh, in the case of uh, oscillating integrals uh, when one puts an i in front of the uh, exponential uh, which I will erase <laughs> so, to simplify my analysis so in the well-known way of uh, evaluating this integral or at least estimating it for a small value of the parameter h bar and also to investigate the dependence on some parameters let's say the, the the exponential may have some parameters t and you want to study how the the integral depends on h bar and a and t when h bar goes to zero let's say so it is convenient to view this integral as a counter integral uh, where the original manifold x uh, is viewed as sitting inside some complex variety which i would denote by x complexified and then you can so try to decompose the the the, uh, the cycle. The original manifold view is a cycle viewed as a cycle. You can decompose in some basis of uh, middle dimensional cycles in the complexification X C, and these are cycles in the relative uh, sense. So they they, uh, they represent the relative homology of the uh, complex variety X C modular the uh, subset where the real part of the thing in exponential is very, very large so this is uh, so basically we, we allow the contours to be non-compact but we want the ends to go off to the to, to, to infinity along the directions where the exponential is very small so the integral is convergent and so that so there are two uh, kind of ways of looking at, at these counters. So one is sort of asymptotic. And another is uh, more local. It's uh, that's based on the steepest descent method or subtle point, well, steepest descent, I think the proper name. And this is where we try to choose the optimal representatives for these counters. Uh, for the cycles gamma a, we start at the critical points of of the uh, real part of the exponential. So this is where the uh, basically the integral uh, should be dominated, and then try to orient the contour in such a way that uh, the uh, real part grows as fast as possible along uh, those directions so that the exponential factor 
decays as fast as possible. So this is the, we try to uh, position the counter in this way. So this is the critical point. Of the exponential, and because because it's because uh, we view S as an analytic function of of our integration variables, the critical points of a, of a real part is simultaneously the critical point of the function itself. Now, uh, because of the again because of the analyticity of S, the um, so the, the if the critical points are isolated then the real part has the more syntax. So the number of negative eigenvalues of the second quadratic form of the Hessian equal to the dimension of the real manifold X. And so the union of the, uh, the gradient trajectories which emanate from the critical point will form a middle dimensional cell inside the complexified space. Uh, so if you, uh, okay, maybe I should add. So if you think about, uh, let's say, quad quadratic function, just locally, the most more critical function, more critical point will uh, have this form. And so if I write, so x is now a com complex variable, I can write it as uh, uh, its real part. And the imaginary part, so the real part of S over H bar, let's, let's assume for the second that H bar is also real, uh, would be one over H bar, uh, sum of alpha squared minus beta squared. So, uh, so we see that we have equal number of positive and negative squares. And so at the critical point X equals to zero, uh, the directions along which the function grows is the direction in which alpha uh, beta is equal to zero. And so these are this the so these these directions will form the Lefschetz thimble associated to the to the point zero, and there is a dual thimble where the function uh, actually decreases. That's where alpha is equal to zero. This is the dual. So the, so the red thing is the local description of Lefschetz thimble associated to the point x equals to zero. Now, if the function S has several critical points, we'll have several Lefschetz thimbles. And uh, so the, the study of, of the neighborhoods of the critical points is the first step in, in, in trying to understand the the geometry of this uh, uh, contours and, and so on and so forth. So for each for each Lefschetz symbol, we can uh, compute the period of the corresponding exponential form along this uh, symbol, and then the original integral will be recovered as some linear combination of these periods with integer coefficients, which can be computed by intersecting the original contour x. Uh, with dual Lefschetz symbols. So th this is why the dual symbols are also important. Okay, so this is the finite dimensional story, which is uh, well known, but has infinitely many subtleties. And Jan, of course, is, uh, has written now 300 pages about uh, those subtleties, if, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, more, now uh, more. Okay, 600 pages, <laughs> all right. <laughs> so all questions should be addressed to him. <laughs> so what, what I just told you is my memory from my, my uh, you know, undergraduate years when they were studying singularity theory. So one of the applications of singularity theory is actually the study of oscillating integrals. Um, so now the idea is to apply this uh, finite dimensional technology in uh, 
in infinite dimensions. And the first case of interest is the uh, is quantum mechanics, where we, uh, thanks to Feynman, we uh, represent various quantities of interest in quantum mechanical problems as path integrals. So these are integrals over the spaces of paths, uh, or in some special cases, this, uh, integrals over the spaces of loops in some uh, symplectic manifold. So P here is a symplectic, real symplectic manifold, and I will assume it's real analytic. And X, the real manifold over which we integrate, will be the space of parameterized loops. So these are the maps of the circle. Uh, so gamma with T, the parameter of the circle has period beta. So that's, these are the loops parameterized with them. Um, the specific uh, periodicity. And uh, so the, the thing which we put in the exponential traditionally is uh, in, in the standard quantum mechanics, uh, one studies oscillating integrals where the expression in the exponential consists of the, cl of the classical mechanical action on, uh, computed along, along this loop which is the period of the canonical form PDQ minus the Hamiltonian integrated along the measure DT. So this is where the parameterization of the trajectory is important. And then uh, in certain applications, we uh, slightly modify this functional, we actually make it complex. And uh, so in, in, in doing the so-called weak rotation, we erase the, uh, erase the I in front of the Hamiltonian. So, so the integral becomes partially oscillating, partially exponential. So, so, so the, the, the part of the canonical form still has, has an I in front of it, and the part with the Hamiltonian doesn't have, uh, has a real coefficient in front of it. And so what does this thing compute? It computes the trace over some uh, Hilbert space. Of the uh, compressing operator exponential minus beta over h bar times h hat, where h hat is some remission operator uh, acting in H, uh, which in good uh, quantum, quantum mechanic problems is bounded below. And so one expects that this uh, trace is, uh, is actually uh, convergent for sufficiently large value of beta. And uh, one can of course analytically continue it. So uh, one expects convergence for the real part of beta over H bar uh, large enough. So this is why we like to study the exponential integrals in quantum mechanics. And uh, so this is why we would like to uh, apply the left symbol philosophy to, uh, to such integrals. Uh, uh, Nikita, I, uh, I feel there is a question. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, the question is, in case if I do not consider uh, periodic trajectories, I should fix probably two Lagrangian submanifolds and consider exactly yes okay. yes and so that would represent instead of the trace that would represent some matrix element yeah uh, and it's somewhat well it's uh, it is also we can also discuss that but uh, in fact on the next slide I would mention some of that but I consider uh, those problems uh, somewhat more difficult to 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 define precisely. So trace is uh, the first problem. So, so it's, it's well, as, as, as everybody knows, it's easier to compute the trace of, of some operator than to compute its, 
you know, magic settlements in some God knows, God given basis. So let's 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 try to analyze a simpler problem first. Now, why do we want to compute trace? Well, because that if we know the trace, we know the spectrum of the operator. So we can extract the eigenvalues of the uh, of this operator h, h hat. And so the classical problem where uh, this is interesting is uh, already the one dimensional quantum mechanics of a uh, system with one degree of freedom, like a particle uh, moving in one dimensions in, in some potential. So the Hamiltonian h hat, the operator in this case is, is the Schrodinger operator, which, which consists of a Laplacian plus some potential. And the interesting case is where the potential has a uh, has this double well uh, form. Uh, so, so this is the called the unharmonic mm -hmm. oscillator. So this, again, uh, your uh, circle S1 will be a real line with minus and plus infinity glued together or what? No, no, no. My circle is uh, my circle is uh, it's a will, finite will, circle. Will be for that problem because otherwise you need to specify uh, boundary conditions and it will not be periodic. So I'm confused. The circle is uh, it's a time circle. So 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 uh -huh. the very so so in this example the variables so this x is what I called q and uh, um, so there is one variable Q and one variable P, so the conjugate momentum. Ah, okay, 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 sorry. Yeah, so you will be looking <laughs> for, for periodic trajectories in Hamiltonian. Okay, good. Mm -hmm. Right, right. So, so, we, so we would like to compute the spectrum of this, uh, of this operator, meaning that we look for the solutions of the, of the equation H hat psi equals e psi, where psi belongs to... Uh, let's say L2 of R, so that this, so, so Psi is defined on the real line, but uh, uh, the circle, so you don't see the circle yet. So in order to see the circle, we need to set up the problem of, uh, so, so, uh, so if, if I substitute here as, as my Hamiltonian, P squared over two plus U of Q, where U is given by, uh, by this formula. And so study the path integral over the loops in the space of P and Q. So I have, so my phase space here is the, is a plane, two dimensional plane, and I'm studying various loops in this plane. And so for each loop, which is for each parameterized loop, like, like so, I compute uh, the integral p d q, which is the just the symplectic area inside the loop, and so put it here, and then I compute the integral along the loop of the Hamiltonian, and put it here. And so, and so that, then integrate over all loops, and so that should give me the generating function of the eigenvalues. Of, of this operator. Okay, is it clear? Yeah, 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 it's clear. Right? Okay, very good. So now there is some there is a, a puzzle associated to this problem, which is, uh, in some sense, well, very instructive. So classically, if you think about, about the, the Hamiltonian, the classical Hamiltonian H of P and X and study its trajectories. So you can study them in the phase space. So X, P. So there are two vacua, uh, so two, two critical points of the Hamiltonian. So one is when X equals to V and P equals to zero. Another is when X equals to minus V and P still equal to zero. And if you just look at the tra trajectories of constant energy, well, you have the, you know, the familiar picture with separate tricks. And uh, so if you look at the trajectories of small energy, well, you have two identical 
uh, two identical uh, pictures near x equals v and near x equals minus v. So the physics, the classical physics is sort of doubly degenerate as far as uh, the smaller, the low energy states are concerned. And quantum mechanically, you can study this problem approximately by, by studying the uh, solving, showing the equation by approximating the potential by a, by a quadratic potential, just like what I did for the exponential problem where I approximated the exponential uh, by, by, by quadratic function. And uh, in this way, you'll get uh, two uh, identical perturbation series for the energy, uh, for the eigenvalues. So you have uh, eigenstates which are localized near x equals to v and uh, eigenstates which are localized near x equals to minus v. And so you would conclude if, if you work in perturbation theory in, in, in H bar, that you, the spectrum of my Hamiltonian is doubly degenerate. And you can even say that, well, there is a symmetry which uh, flips the sign of X, so the parity symmetry, and it comes for the Hamiltonian. And so you would conclude that, that uh, so this, the, uh, the eigenspaces of, uh, of my Hamiltonian form the two-dimensional representation of the, of the symmetry. However, it's a classical theorem in, in quantum mechanics that uh, the, at least for the ground states, for the ground state, for the state of lowest energy, the degeneracy is not possible. So something must be wrong with this argument. And uh, uh, so what is well known is that there are non-perturbative non-analytic corrections in H bar to the spectrum, which leave the degeneracy. So instead of the uh, doubly degenerate spectrum, you actually have non-degenerate spectrum. And in particular, the state, which is the eigenstate of the parity operator, the, uh, the symmetric combination of the wave functions uh, localized near uh, left and, and the right minimum. So this, the symmetric combination, actually it's, I should write it. So this is my potential. And then there's some kind of bump in, in the, so there's some non-zero non probability for the for the particle to, to, to stay under the under the uh, hump in the classically forbidden region. So this is the state of the lowest energy. It has lower energy than the antisymmetric combination, for which the uh, probability of uh, being at the center is equal to zero. So this, is, this has higher energy. So, so there is a small difference between the two eigenvalues and the uh, perhaps 40 year old uh, technology to, to explain this difference. Of course, the fact that there is a difference is probably even older and can be computed by WKB methods, which are very old, but the sort of explanation how to how to see this difference in the path integral is uh, uh, by the approximate 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 calculation of the matrix element of the evolution operator of of this Euclidean evolution operator between uh, the states which are localized at uh, plus v and minus v in the coordinate space. So this is what Jan was uh, talking about. So this is the path, the path integral uh, where instead of the loops, one takes the integrals uh, over the maps of the interval into the phase space. So this is my phase space. And these are two Lagrangians. So one is Lagrangian when x equals to v, another is Lagrangian when x equals to minus v. And uh, you either, so you, you, there are two integrals to consider. One is over the uh, path which connect 
connect these two Lagrangians, and another integral is over the path which uh, connect Lagrangian to itself. So two calculations. So the calculations which are usually done uh, in the limit, especially back to infinity, they are um, not very honest, let me put it this way. So what people say is that, uh, well, we, we calculate the, the integral by some kind of saddle point approximation, and then we don't find the exact saddle points, we find the approximate saddle points. In fact, what we find are approximate we find some trajectories which look similar to the exact saddle points for beta equals to infinity. Um, so, and so what, what is it that we are looking for? So we remember we have this expression, I'm oh, sorry. Uh, in the exponential and from now on uh, so if I if I if I want to compute the so I will absorb I, what I will, I will actually absorb uh, h bar inside beta and I will be, think of my trajectories is being parameterized by the parameter from zero to one. So beta is just the coefficient in front of the second term. Uh, so uh, what you're doing is, so you want to find the critical point of that. So if I call this whole thing minus S uh, over H bar, so the critical point of S over H bar is a solution of Hamilton equations, uh, almost. Because Hamilton, uh, Hamilton's equations are obtained by varying uh, integral PDQ minus HDT. But we have, uh, we have uh, I multiplying this term. And so the equations look slightly, diff they have a slightly different form. It look like one over h bar q dot equals beta dh over dp and minus i over h bar p dot equals uh, beta dh over dq. So this, this is the equations which we need to solve with the boundary conditions for uh, the problem uh, here. For the green problem, boundary conditions are that uh, q of zero is equal to minus v, q of one is equal to v. And for the blue problem, uh, q of zero equals q of one equals to plus v. And p is arbitrary in both cases. So then what people usually do, they say that, well, this is equal to beta P, if the Hamiltonian is P squared over two plus U. And so you can exclude P, express it through, through the time derivative of Q, substitute in the second equation. And then you get the ordinary Euler Lagrange equation for the particle moving in the inverted potential. So you'll get an equation um, Q double dot is equal to U prime up to some, up to the uh, beta squared. So, so in, in the, uh, I remind you that for the ordinary uh, Euler Lagrange equation, you, you would have uh, Q double dot equals minus U prime. So this is ordinary 
polar Lagrange, and here you have plus sign. So that's why the potential is effectively inverted. And so people say, okay, so if I start, if I want to go from minus V to plus V, and uh, the, so this beta basically rescales time, so if beta is very large, then the best way to do it is to take the trajectory which takes uh, infinite time and takes zero energy. So we just, oops, I'm sorry. Uh, so it starts at the top of the hill. The hill is obtained by inverting the, the well and, and, and uh, flowing to, to the right. So th this trajectory is called the instanton. Uh, how do I rotate this? I forgot. So the, the solution uh, so this solution uh, is a function of time it actually takes an infinite time so this is now x so this is minus v this is plus v and there is some explicit function Which is not important. What's important is that uh, it, it takes an infinite time to go exactly from minus v to plus v, but if you're, if you're willing to make some error of the order uh, delta, then uh, with exponential precision, you can cut this, in, cut this uh, at some uh, large but finite value of, of time. And so what people do, they, 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 they say that, okay, so equally to, to, the, to the path integral, the uh, approximate solutions, which will have alternating jumps up and down will contribute. And by summing over these solutions, one recovers uh, the, um, so the, the uh, expected, So, so what we're trying to, to, to recover here is that uh, delta E, and this is obtained by, as a, as a, as a, as a sum. So, so this, this, uh, uh, the, the case contribution to the sum, uh, is roughly speaking, comes from, in, in this argument, comes from the, uh, the uh, contribution of the trajectories where you have k, k times k pairs of instanton. So this is an instanton. And there is a, the other solution which goes in other direction, which is the anti-instant term. Instant on, anti-instant on. So this is uh, sort of the accepted, accepted uh, uh, even textbook uh, presentation of the explanation of this uh, small separation of the levels. And I never really liked it. So I wanted, uh, so one reason for, for one thing, these trajectories are kind of arbitrary. So who decides where to put the truncation, what, what chooses this, this, uh, uh, this uh, time interval, the, uh, and so on. So this is not, I, I, I never found this very con too, too convincing. So this is, it was kind of suspicious. So this, so my main complaint is that this is not this is not a critical point. 
of the action. And of course, this is well known. So people in, in textbooks, they usually say, well, this is not a critical point, but there is a critical point somewhere nearby. And I wanted to find out where it is, where, where is nearby. So where, where is this critical point? So, um, let's, uh, so that's why I want to, to, to try to analyze this problem in a, in a more, uh, slightly more uh, clean way. So instead of these matrix elements, instead of these matrix elements, let's uh, go back to the computation of the trace. So let's consider this problem. And so we'll, uh, it means that we will be st studying this, the integrals over the space of loops. And let's just ask a straightforward question. So where are the true critical points? So the two critical points. So in fact, uh, in some sense, people did try to answer this question. So they said, okay, if this is not a critical point, then if I uh, expand my action around this, this, uh, this trajectory, I will find uh, the first order variation, the second order variation, and so on. So maybe I can uh, try to extremize with respect to the variation. So instead of the, so if I call this x of t zero, uh, maybe I can shift, so find, define x one to be x zero plus xi, where xi is obtained by extremizing uh, extremizing the, the second order uh, approximation to the, to, the, to the action at this point. So this was the approach taken by uh, Bogomolny. And uh, so, what he was, so what he was doing was interpreted by Albert Schwartz as, as, doing, as trying to find the true critical point by Newton, Newton's method. Uh, but it was very hard actually. So to, to do it, uh, it's, kind of, it's, it's very hard. And I think what was not observed in these you know, calculations was that the critical point actually tend to shift into a complex domain. And so this is what I will demonstrate now, very briefly. So what do we expect? So we expect that the critical points would be the maps of the circle into the complexified phase space. As, as in the finite dimensional case. So because this is uh, uh, because this is what the naive complexification of the space of loops into the phase space is. So this is, these are loops in the complexified phase space. Uh, the time is not complexified, yeah. And the time is still real. Yes, time is real. Mm -hmm. uh, String theory complexifies time in some sense, uh, but uh, I don't see uh, I don't see this as a natural natural thing to do in, in this case. So we we really want to we we do we study an exponential integral. We just want to shift the the contour of integration. We don't even want to change the dimension of our contour of integration. Uh, uh, so okay. The previous one should be thought as what is uh, something uh, half dimensional real subspace. What? Right. So we we will be looking for some uh, cycles, middle dimensional cycles in this complexified space. And how do we get middle dimensional cycles? Well, we'll get them as Lefschetz symbols. associated to critical points. So that's why we need to find the critical points. So the search for left and symbols starts with the search for critical points.
critical points of the now of this uh, again partly com complex uh, well this weak rotated action so the what happened now is that now p and q are complex so p so for each value of t the pair pq belongs to the complexified phase space uh, so now I'm, I'm going to I'm going to uh, restrict myself. I'm going to restrict myself uh, with the case of uh, algebraically integrable systems. So it, my assumption is that that the complexification of the phase space is an algebraically integrable system. So in this example, which I start with of the unharmonic oscillator, what the statement amounts to, it amounts to the simple fact that uh, the properly compactified level set of the energy is, the elliptic, is an elliptic curve. in uh, partially compactified uh, situ. I need to add uh, some locus where P and X go to infinity. Or if you like, if I don't compact, com complexify, if I don't compactify then if I stay within uh, C2, then this is the elliptic curve, uh, sorry. Uh, minus um, maybe two points. Okay, so the more general case would be that uh, uh, my phase space, my complexified phase space has a structure of the uh, uh, vibration, Lagrangian vibration by abelian varieties. So these are Billion varieties principally polarized. There is some locus of singular fibers somewhere. But the, so, the, so there is a base, there is a projection which is Lagrangian. So P minus one of. Uh, Is Lagrangian and it is abelian. Okay, so now we are sending, so we're we are studying. We're mapping loops. We are mapping circle uh, circles into this space, and we look for the uh, critical points of the action. So, in this general situation, the action itself is might, might be actually multi-valued. It's uh, it's derivative. It's differential uh, on the space of loops, which is uh, which should be well defined. So the um, so this is the integral over the loop of the symplectic form divided by h bar times i minus the integral of the derivative of the differential of the Hamiltonian. Um, maybe I will write it as delta. So this is the derivative. It's a one form on the manifold, and then this is the integrated along the circle. Beta. Okay, so uh, it is well known what what are the uh, critical points of the action. So as 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 I said already, the solutions of the Hamilton equations, but the Hamilton equations on the uh, algebraic integral system are solved in a particularly simple way. 
okay? Namely, the solutions are straight lines. Uh, on abelian variety. So these are solutions to, to the equation delta s equals to zero, except that uh, most of them are not closed. So most of them are not uh, periodic. And we have a strict periodistic condition. So we, our trajectory has to be periodic with the period one in the variable t or period beta in the variable beta times t. So only very special, so, so the actual set of periodic trajectories will, will, will form, well, first of all, they correspond to some points on the base because the trajectory takes, uh, takes uh, values in one abelian variety. And uh, not every point on the base will do only those for which the period of, of motion will be uh, such that the trajectory will be closed. But um, one thing- Nikit, sorry, I, I'm a bit confused. Yes? Uh, do you uh, want to have at least one closed geodesic on, on the abelian variety or, or what? Because, I mean, you always one, can so, find such- Okay, let's let's do it uh, maybe sl slower. No, so no what I mean, ju just said because I'm con confused. You have so you are looking for a real walk. periodic solutions which should correspond to close uh, closed curves in the fibers of your integrable system. We want we want closed uh, uh, trajectories. Does it answer your question? <laughs> so it's, so uh, no, it, it doesn't answer my question because you said something that you you look for not an arbitrary point on the base, uh, I mean on the complement to the discriminant, but you have some special points for right. which you have. Uh, let's okay. Clear. Let's exactly. So I'm 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 going to explain why why is what's so special about those points. Mm. So we want closed trajectories. So these trajectories. Uh, Maybe it will be useful, uh, uh, helpful to uh, remind you the action, var action angles, var action angle variables. So from some canonical variables P and Q, which are some arbitrary variable coordinates, we can pass to the coordinates A phi, where A's are local. Uh, I think, yeah, I think I, I, I know uh, what should be the invariant answer. You look for your uh, zero section for the base. Let's assume that it's embedded at the zero section of uh, your integrable mm. system. Then you, <laughs> um, it, it has an integral affine structure because you have an integrable uh, system structure. So this is, this is, uh, so this is the fancy name for the uh, ac uh, action variable. So this is the- Yes, uh, some periods should work. be integers. That will be your, your answer probably. Not hmm? quite, not quite. You're, you're, uh, you're, you're forgetting about the Hamiltonian, you see. Okay, so yeah, zero uh, so Hamiltonian. Some, okay, yeah, correct. Yeah. But zero Hamiltonian is not an interesting problem. For zero Hamiltonian, the trajectory stays at one place. So. <laughs> yes, yes, but they okay. must be integer. No, the, the, okay, the, anyway, go for zero Hamiltonian, yeah. the trajectories are point-like. So the, that's yeah, that's, yeah, yeah. Uh, that's the, the, you don't see those trajectories for zero Hamiltonian. Okay, so so there is this Darbu, so there, there are Darbu coordinates. Uh, in which the angle variables, so the variable, so the so the action variables are coordinates on the base, and phi's are coordinates on the fiber, uh, which are such that the, the differentials are holomorphic differentials on 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 this abelian variety. And moreover, they are normalized so that uh, half of the periods are uh, two pi integers. So the uh, the first homology group of my abelian variety has rank two r, where r is the dimension 
uh, of the base. And so I can choose the uh, Lagrangian sublattice in this uh, in this lattice, Lagrangian respect to the polarization, and normalize it, uh, my differential so that uh, the periods of these differentials uh, along the A cycles, so A cycles span the Lagrangian sublattice here are uh, canonical, so delta, uh, delta ing. Okay, so now what's so special about this coordinates is that my Hamiltonian and more general Hamiltonians, they are the functions, it's a function of A only. So this is what, so the a priori, the original Hamiltonian, which was a function of P and Q, in these variables is a function of A only. And so the, uh, the Hamilton equations are now solved trivially because A dot is equal to zero and phi dot uh, up to, uh, so if we go back, go back, go back, go back. Uh, okay, here, so we have uh, I over H bar and beta. Uh, so I over beta H bar is equal to the derivative of the Hamiltonian with respect to A. So my uh, solution, so by trajectory A of T is equal to A of zero, but phi of T is equal to phi of zero plus uh, I over beta H and way around. beta h bar over i dh over dA times t. And I want my solution to be periodic, which means that phi i of one minus phi i of zero is a period. And what are the periods? So we know half of the periods. So phi's are defined up to shifting shift by an integers, but there are other periods, namely there are periods along the B cycles. And those are given by the uh, period matrix. So uh, my solution will be periodic if this difference can be written in this form. And so this is the Period matrix. It has to do with the uh, with the sec with the possibility of choosing a second choice of second set of the action variables can be written as the second derivative of a locally holomorphic function called the potential, so on and so forth. So this is my equation. So the equation of uh, selecting the special points on the base is uh, that. Uh, beta h bar over i dh over dA k is equal to two pi n k plus tau k l m l for, for some vector vectors n m in the uh, uh, largest of periods. In other words, this is equivalent to the statement that a certain uh, superpotential, which depends on a, on, a cho on choice of these integers, on a, an integer vector, has a critical point. So this superpotential is defined. So this W, uh, better to call it as a function of gamma. So gamma is really an element of the uh, second of the first homology group of a generic fiber. And so what this, what this superpotential is, essentially it's the period along the cycle of the uh, antiderivative of the holomorphic symplectic form divided by over h bar minus beta h viewed as a function on the base. So this is what it means to be an integral system. The Hamiltonian is actually a pullback of some holomorphic function on the base. And so the critical points 
and therefore the left of symbols in the quantum mechanical problem are the critical points of this function. So, uh, so if you try to plot them on, uh, on the base uh, of the integrable system, well, they will form some kind of a, some kind of a lattice, which uh, tends to, uh, to be concentrated near the, near the discriminant locus. So this is the discriminant. And uh, these points are somewhere near, near the discriminant locus for, for, uh, for beta go, going to infinity. So, the, the, uh, so the, this is largest labeled by the choice, the choices of, uh, so these are different gammas, different gammas. And the, the uh, locus uh, on the discriminant depends on the choice of gamma, namely uh, this is the locus where the cycle gamma vanishes. Remember that uh, the discriminant is where my abelian variety degenerates, and this is where the one of the cycles uh, shrinks. So this is the uh, structure of these two critical points, and this is the reason, so the fact that it has to do with the uh, vanishing cycles, this is the explanation for why uh, this old picture of instantons, anti-instantons was, was so good, because the instantons, they actually the motion of the cycles, which are kind of dual to the vanishing cycles. So this is why they take uh, such a long time. Okay, so I'm, I'm almost out of time and I haven't even started on my uh, main point of this talk. Is uh, now trying to generalize it uh, to field theory. So let me be... Uh, brief, but uh, informative. <laughs> so by field theory, I mean the generalization, let's say to one plus one dimensional uh, case, where now I have one dimensional time and one dimensional space. And uh, the specific field theory, which I want to study uh, would be the Sigma model, which describes the maps of some Riemann surface uh, to some Riemannian manifold, some Riemannian manifold which I will take to be a sphere. So this is known in physics as the ON model. And this is an interesting case uh, because uh, in, the, in the quantum mechanical example, so the first example which we studied, it was an example where it was a symmetry of the problem. And the symmetry was broken by, by instantons. And so the, the need for the uh, careful treatment of the non-trivial saddle points in the uh, path integral for the non-trivial, for the multiple left shift symbols was important in, in understanding the fate of that symmetry. So in, in this uh, two-dimensional case, the classical question is that there is an ON symmetry of rotations of the, of the sphere. And the question is what happens to that symmetry in the, in the, in the quantum, in quantum theory. So the question which I want to, to, I will not answer this question, but I want to at least try to say something about the analog of the trace of the evolution operator. So now these times this trace is, a, is over the Hilbert space, uh, which is now this obtained by quantizing the theory on the circle. So now the space is a circle and time, uh, so time is another circle. Uh, 
And in order to explore the symmetry, we can consider the twisted trace where G is an element, is an element of the ON symmetry group. And we can also introduce another uh, symmetry group uh, by imposing the twisted boundary conditions on the space circle. So uh, we will be studying uh, the quantization of the space of maps. So, so in other words, we're studying the space of maps of a two, uh, of a two torus into the sphere, which are twisted by, uh, by an ON flat connection. In other words, phi of sigma plus uh, two pi tau is equal to h applied to phi of sigma tau, and phi of sigma tau plus beta is g phi sigma tau. Okay, and so the uh, in principle one can try to study it for any any g and h, but uh, it seems the first step is to, is to study for flat connections. So, so this means that we have flat ON connection as a parameter. So, um, so as before, we would like to, so this, this is our space X over which we integrate. So this is this integral of the space of X of the, of twisted maps, e to the minus the essentially Dirichlet functional, the L to norm of the gradient of the map. And what do we need to do? We need to study the uh, critical points of the complexification of that function. So this is done by, uh, so first of all, we realize the sphere as sitting inside the Euclidean space. So this is just the quadric. Whose equation is O in invariant. And now we complexify. So X C will be the maps of the real torus into the complexified sphere. So this is the quadric In, in the, uh, so it's, an, it's a fine quadric in the, co in the uh, complex uh, vector space. So my, my uh, action functional is now a, holom a holomorphic function. So the functional is precisely dx i d bar x i, sum from one to n, plus a Lagrange multiplier enforcing uh, this constraint. So this is my action. So now uh, everything is, is defined. So X uh, belongs to C and the boundary conditions, uh, twisted boundary conditions uh, are best formulated by introducing the variables Z and Z tilde. So notice that Z and Z tilde are not complex conjugate. They are just, they are just uh, complex valued uh, functions on the two torus. So I'm uh, let me assume from now on that my sphere is uh, odd dimensional. So let's say that N is even. And this variable A goes from uh, one to M. And so twisted boundary conditions twist simply mean that ZA of sigma plus two pi tau is equal to, uh, so it's just multiplication by some number HA. Z tilde.
So the fact that these are these eigenvalues are inverse, that's the remnant of the fact that this should be sitting inside the all, all uh, the orthogonal group, although this group now is actually also complexified. We are allowed to uh, complexify twists because this is simply the analytic continuation. So we, we have analyticity in these parameters. Just like we have analyticity in the parameter beta. So even I should stress this point. It's, uh, uh, well, before I write next formula, I can actually introduce the real time and say that the period is exactly one and trade beta in the definition of the metric, in the definition of the action. Now the action will involve uh, the sigma derivatives, the time derivatives, uh, the cross derivatives, and uh, well, I may be mistaken, but the uh, so the, there are some parameters like tau, tau. Uh, tau bar plus tau bar and uh, maybe there is one over tau minus tau bar and uh, so tau is uh, i beta plus some theta so one can also allow Inside this trace, introduce also the shift. So P is the uh, the sigma shift, so that we introduce the twist by the angle theta in, in, in uh, imposing the periodic, periodic boundary conditions. Uh, so the bottom line is that tau and tau bar also don't have to become this conjugate. So this is we can do com the complexification of the metric on the torus without making the torus complex. So the torus is, is still real, it's just that the metric on the torus is, 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 is a complex parameter. Okay, so this is as far as boundary conditions are concerned. And the point is that the, uh, these fields, the, the, variational, the variation of the action, will produce the Schrodinger equation for all components, for all axes. But uh, what we need, we need that, that uh, some, some of this, some linear, linear combinations of, of the solutions of the Schrodinger equation obey twisted boundary conditions. So they, they require some multipliers in going around to the cycles of the torus and the second equation, which is which is obtained from uh, from varying respect to u, is that the uh, the solutions of the Schrodinger equation have to be normalized, and as a consequence, the the Schrodinger potential itself can be expressed in terms of the solutions. So this is the structure is sometimes called the self-consistent Schrodinger potential. So to solve to to classify the Lefschetz symbols of the on Sika model is to classify self-consistent Schrodinger potentials on the two-dimensional torus. So that's the problem which we want to solve. So our potential depends on sigma and t, 
and it is doubly periodic. Uh, I don't know why I chose T to be periodic with period one. Let me say that everything has period two pi for uniformity. And uh, U is such that it has, first of all, it has uh, several solutions. So this, this, this equation should have uh, N non-singular solutions and moreover the solutions uh, should come with the uh, a bank, uh, a and g twists and uh, u must be expressed in terms of the solutions Oops, sorry i So this is the problem, okay? Okay, before I present the answer, if uh, if I can have another maybe 10 minutes. Uh, yeah, you can, but uh, as a kind of a request for those 10 minutes, you should uh, in the end explain what's a general pattern because when model, I mean, it's not something which people are familiar with, so they will be happy when you solve it. But if you replace it with something else, you know. You, yes. You, you well, I don't. Okay. Well, we don't know what the general pattern is. So it's the fact that it's uh, we, we we find something uh, similar to the structure which I found in the in the quantum mechanical case with this algebraic integral systems uh, is surprising. So, in it, so, will, so that's, will you that's, have an integrable, a complex integrable system? Uh, yes. Okay. Okay. So, so that's that, that. So basically, that that's going to be the message that even though in itself doesn't seem to be uh, this the ON model and especially CPN model. So there is another case where uh, the same structure seems to work. It's but not doing to be. What, what it's not would be? To be uh, I mean. Do, do I remember correctly that there is sort of a spectral curve for this ON model? And uh, is the integrable system just a, f I don't know, like family of Jacobians of those curves? Well, uh, uh, well, that's, that's uh, okay. So the, the um, okay, so before, before, before I state, okay, before I answer, before I proceed there, I just wanted to, Say something about the, the old case. So the, just just a reminder that uh, lots of examples of algebraic integral systems uh, are given by families of curves. Families of algebraic curves. Like Hitchin system, in which the this abelian variety is a Jacobian of some curve, or it's maybe it's a prime variety. So it's built. So 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 this abelian variety doesn't pop out of nowhere. It it, it actually has a one-dimensional origin. So with that said, uh, I want to say something about the ON model. So of course, um, it is known from from the old days that. Uh, there is a way of mapping the equations of motion of ON model using the so-called Palmyre reduction or using uh, even older work of uh, Mikhailov uh, and Zaharov, I think, to, uh, so there is, some kind, there is some kind of zero curvature representation from which one can derive some kind of a curve. Yeah, okay. Yeah, and that's sure. not the curve, and this is not, um, uh, unfortunately, this, this has no, uh, this is of no help. These are, these are not the curves which we find. Okay. Ah, so it's, it's and that's, not the curve related to the lux pair of this system. Okay. Right, right. So the lux pair of the system uh, seems to be a misleading curve. 
Be, because uh, it's very, very hard to impose the periodicity conditions. So, so that approach works fine when, when your uh, space and time are non-compact, but it becomes, uh, but it doesn't seem to be uh, natural uh, for, the, uh, for the problem where I have uh, my wall trick is a torus. Or even worse, uh, sigma, uh, some ring surface. So it turns out that what one should study, one should study a novel kind of, well, novel, it's, again, it's, um, I guess, it's the, the fact that there are several curves which one can associate to, to a PDE. Again, it's not exactly new. Uh, in, uh, another example of that, uh, which I'm familiar with at least, is the study of the uh, monopoles, Bogomol, uh, BPS monopoles on uh, R2 cross S1. And there, there are, uh, so there are two kinds of curves one can associate to the problem. One is the twister curve, uh, and another is the Hitchin-like curve. And so uh, the usual approach in which you see the integrability of this system of, this, of the border space of monopoles is through the Hitchin uh, uh, view, but uh, the one which, which seems to be the, the, right, the right one for the uh, Siegel model, for the ON model, looks more like a twister, twister curve. And so that's what I'm going to uh, recall maybe in the, in very briefly. So the idea is that first is to, is, is to study the, uh, the following problem. That given a, a Schrodinger potential, we study, uh, uh, it's, we study solutions which satisfy Uh, the mm, Floquet Bloch uh, boundary conditions. So, to, in other words, to the operator, to the Schrodinger operator, I associate a curve which depends on this potential, which is a normalization. of the set of the uh, uh, block multipliers uh, for which there is a solution of this equation. Okay, let, let, my, maybe I didn't, it's, it's, it's not, maybe it's not understandable, okay. Uh, sorry. So the curve, so we call it the Fermi curve. So this is a normalization of the set of AB for which there exists a solution to this equation obeying these boundary conditions. The set sits in the space of C star local systems and torus. So, ah, okay. It's not actually the line bundle on the spectral curve, but at those parameters for which it exists. Yeah. Right, so in some sense, so by, 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 by second order differential operator, we represent uh, a local system. But it's a kind of uh, yeah. Okay, so let, let's let's have a look at what it is. So, so the uh, uh, so let's just to, to get a feeling of what it's what what this curve is. Uh, let's take u to be a constant. Kind of a basic example. So then, of course, it is easy to solve this equation. So the solution will be some, uh, just, just an exponential, uh, maybe I'll write it in, 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 in complex coordinates, okay. kz plus uh, u over kz bar, 
And uh, so A would be something like exponential of K plus uh, maybe two pi U over K and B will be two pi tau K uh, plus U over K tau bar. Okay, so, so the curve itself, in this case, the curve of course is just, uh, uh, just CP1, well, strictly speaking CP1 with, with two points deleted, because K is, um, so without K equals to zero, K equals infinity, but we can com compactify it by adding these two points. Uh, and it's a normalization of a set of A and B parameterized by K. What's important is that this, in, this set looks like a lattice. So there are infinitely many double points. So this is inside uh, C star cross C star. So if you look, so if you, you, you can, uh, find that for every pair of integers, uh, non-zero integers, you can find two values of k for which uh, the expressions in exponential will differ by two pi i, two pi uh, uh, i m and two pi i n. So in other words, k uh, plus u over k minus k tilde plus u over k tilde is equal to i m and uh, similarly uh, k tau plus u tau bar over k minus k tilde tau plus u is the bar on the screen what ah, sorry. Uh, okay uh, maybe I should make a lasso. Is it better? Yeah. So you uh, So on the normalization, so you have points, uh, for, so for each M and N, you have points K and K tilde on the normalization, which, uh, uh, which are collapsed by the normalization map. Why is it important? It's important because it turns out that when you perturb the constant, uh, So you consider now the ge generic Fourier uh, series. So for small enough, for small. Uh, Sa same problem with your, uh, if you write something, I, I do not see it on the screen. Okay. Oh yeah, okay, good. No, 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 that's no, no, it's fine. Yes, okay. <laughs> Simply, yeah. So, <laughs> so it's fine. So, so if I uh, now perturb this potential by, by some Fourier modes, that what happens is that now this double point will get resolved. And so as a result, so you can get the picture where basically if, uh, for generic, for generic uh, potential, this spectral curve now has this structure, not, not the Fermi curve has this structure, like an infinite genus curve. or very large in this curve, but for special potentials, and we can call them finite gap, uh, 
potentials uh, will get a uh, the normalization of this of this of the uh, of this uh, block set is a finite finite genus curve. Okay, so maybe I didn't exp uh, explain very well. So once again, if I look at the set of block multipliers, so the, this blue set, once I start perturbing my potential by adding uh, Fourier modes, uh, some of the double points get resolved. But not all. So most of them are still, still remain double points. So when I do the normalization, double points disappear, but the resolved points now correspond to the non-contractible cycles, and so they contribute to the genus. And so that's uh, that's the, the, the that's the definition that the final gap potential is such for which the the uh, the, the result of of this procedure gives me a final genus curve. Which is which has two special points, which uh, p plus and p minus, which are the analogs of the points k equals to infinity and k equals to zero. So these are the points for which the uh, solution of the Schrodinger equation becomes holomorphic or becomes uh, anti-holomorphic. And uh, for, for, uh, in the middle, somewhere in, in the middle, the solution is a complicated function of z and z bar. Okay, so uh, I, I'm sorry for being uh, over time. So what we find, we find the characterization of uh, potentials and uh, well, but uh, criterion of potentials for which uh, there are exactly n solutions and the potential is self-consistent. So, and so this is this characterization is uh, in terms of the in terms of curves with additional structures. So, this curve C should have an involution. It should have uh, marked points, uh, local choice of local coordinates near marked points, and uh, well, addition, additional structures uh, like. Uh, Visor, and so on. So, so with with the uh, uh, I will I will probably not specify this this whole data, but uh, and also the meromorphic function. So with this addition, so with this uh, uh, data, the uh, the potential uh, can be recovered from the uh, so-called baker akiezer function, which is uniquely reconstructed from, from, the, from, from this data. And uh, the poles and, uh, uh, of, of this function at the at this, at the, at this divisor will produce the solutions of this equation, so um, so so basically, the curve parameterizes parameterizes the quasi momenta for the uh, for this equation, and uh, uh, so the. Uh, The potential is given by the uh, logarithmic, well, by the by the Laplacian applied to the logarith logarithm of a theta function 
on the on the prime variety of the curve. So this is uh, so the, the formula as it the formula itself looks similar to the formula for the KDV or KP potential in terms of the uh, uh, theta functions. But uh, here, uh, the main point is that uh, this gives us not just the, the Schrodinger potential, but it gives us the solution. Uh, so this is the solution of the, um, of the ON model, which is complexified. And uh, uh, the, the condition that the solution is periodic or periodic with a twist. So that means that this curve passes through the uh, special points a i b i which related to the uh, sorry the twists um, g a h a and there are conjugate twists remember remember uh, So remember this, uh, my, my solutions came in pairs. So I had the Z solutions and the tilde solutions for which the, the twists were exactly, exactly inverse, inverses of each other. So this, this property that the uh, twists come in, in pairs, we see uh, already at the model example that corresponds to the involution K goes to minus K. So that's the involution of and so we, we, we want this involution to persist in, in a general case so that it, it represents the formal self-duality of, the, of this operator. And so, uh, so the, there is this involution which takes uh, the twist to the inverse. So Z uh, and Z tilde are recovered from from the uh, from the value of the Baker case of function at the special points. Uh, so uh, there is more uh, there's more to say. So that we found the analog of this superpotential W in terms of the in terms of these families of curves. But uh, I think I'm way over time to to to, to explain this in detail. Thank you very much. I hope I hope I gave you a hint of of the fact that. That at least the, the glimpse of the hope that this uh, structure of left symbols persists in, in field theories, uh, not just in quantum mechanics. Yeah, uh, thank you very much. But uh, I, I am sort of confused because uh, the, the, there was no uh, doubt that left shift symbols, uh, the structure uh, does persist in quantum field theory and not necessarily in, in, in relation to integrable models. So it's rather unusual that it's kind of somehow related to, um, uh, to uh, previously known integrable models. Because, I mean... Uh, well, the point... The, the, okay, maybe, maybe I didn't stress this point enough. You see, uh, of course, if you just say that, of course, there are left symbols in field theory in... Uh, in Anywhere, the, this the uh, yes, there are there they, they, they are, but the a priori they classified by uh, solutions to some infinite dimensional problem. So you have to well, you have to find pretty critical points of the action oh, function. No, no. No, I think it's a little bit misleading because uh, uh, when you consider closed trajectories without boundary conditions, it's not the generic case. But if you uh, imagine that um, you have pairs of, uh, say, first real analytic and then uh, complex, complex analytic Lagrangians in a complex symplectic manifold and consider just paths, then your uh, Hamiltonian H, it gives an in, uh, evolution classical of uh, uh, one Lagrangian into another one. So your symbols will correspond to the intersection points. And so no, I'm sorry, Jan, you are, you are, you're still thinking about the zero Hamiltonian. 
No, 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 no. I, I, I'm no longer thinking. I'm thinking about age. You have uh, the then, Hamiltonian. Then you should be, then, then you probably mean the intersections of the evolved Lagrangian. Yes, yes, of course, of the yes, evolved of okay. Lagrangian. But yeah. the point is that. But but what is what is non-trivial? So so okay. So you're still talking about the, it's an infinite dimensional problem. So it's find some intersection of the finite uh, dimensional Lagrangians. Okay, but the point is that this is even uh, so. So you didn't like my, uh, uh, the clean problem of closed trajectories. I can do this <laughs> no, 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 no. I like it. I like it, but it's, it doesn't it's... matter. The, po the point is that this problem reduces to finding a critical point of a function on the base. It's now it's, it becomes a fine dimensional problem. Mm -hmm. Even for the integral, it will be a problem about the finding critical point on the base. Just the, the superpotential will be different. Uh, so, uh, but uh, yeah, yeah, okay, yeah, yeah, I agree. But for me, sort the, the, of the difference, the difference between the uh, you see, uh, so so if if you have a uh, evolution uh, uh, on the open time interval, so then your trajectory just well, just the trajectory just goes. It's still a straight line on a billion variety. Uh, and so, so you still you will you will still have the this uh, feature that it, it may wind several times around the abelian variety before going from one point to another. But then, uh, you know, uh, 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 qualitatively it will be the same the, the same the same structure. You will the, the the novelty. I mean, I would say that the novelty, which is kind of not visible classically, mm -hmm. is that you have a doubling doubling of the uh, of the set of um, quantum numbers, so to speak. So, so the the fact that you have A cycles and B cycles is uh, uh, that's what I find to be uh, you know interesting, because classically when we discuss the quantization of energy levels, we normally associate the integers to the uh, you know real cycles on the real real toroid. But Slavshin symbols are classified by uh, roughly twice the number, uh, twice as many integers, and uh, they they do have some relation to the instanton and instanton pairs. Uh, but it's a kind of a tricky relation. So, the, but the, the bottom line is that even though the classification of Slavshin symbols, we're doing the classification of Slavshin symbols for infinite dimensional integrals. But the uh, uh, the answer turns out to be equivalent to a classification of Lefschetz symbols. At, at classification, not I'm not saying that Lefschetz symbols are the same, but they they classified by the same data as uh, finite dimensional exponential integrals uh, taken over the essentially over the uh, uh, various covers of the base of the uh, integrable system. This covers, uh, these are covers by the uh, various subgroups of the fundamental group of the complement to the discriminant. Uh, Nikita, may, may I ask you for a, a sort of a different model, which uh, I'm more familiar and, with? And so just, just so to make, finish with this, oh. and even more surprisingly, in the even more infinite dimensional problem where we now have the two dimensional space time, the answer still boils down to some finite, well, it's a union, uh, I mean, it's, it's an infinite union of finite dimensional problems. So it's, it's, it's less infinite dimensional than, than naively you could have expected. That, that's, that's, that's my surprise at least. Uh, if if I kind of apply, so you you you, you of course know that there was like this old paper by Witten about analytic continuation in quantum mechanics, but also in Chern Simons. Yeah, uh, it's a quantum See, okay, field so, theory. So, it's so three this, dimensional. Uh, so so the um, I mean I'm, I don't want to you know be physical or anything, but so this is the case of a theory with zero Hamiltonian. Uh, begin with. Uh, yes, this is true. Yeah. It's, okay, it's... and uh, of course, uh, what I presented and what he was talking about, this uh, grew out of, you know, our actually in some sense our joint work on the relation of quantization to the four-dimensional supersymmetric and equals two gauge theories. 
So I didn't, uh, so they, that, that, that answer which I gave for these integers mm -hmm. uh, can be understood in terms of the, um, in, so th this, this has some relation to, to gauge theories in higher dimensions. And uh, so in case of uh, analytic continuation of chain Simons theory, that would be uh, lifting the three-dimensional theory to uh, six-dimensional theory. And so in, so in general, you, you, you gain a few dimensions. So the quantum mechanics, for example, so this problem is related to four-dimensional n equals two superannuals. Uh, so we start in one dimensions, so this is quantum mechanics. And I, I claim that this counting and, and this, this setup is, can be naturally understood in terms of the Donaldson theory or its analog uh, on, on the product of a two-dimensional torus times uh, kind of a disc, a cigar, with, some with the, the Planck constant playing the role of the equivariant mm -hmm. parameter with respect to the rotations of the cigar. So, uh, so this is uh, so, so a circle of quantum mechanics got promoted to this four-dimensional uh, manifold. Now, in Witten's story, he starts with uh, the three manifold, and then uh, so the three manifold is the boundary of a four manifold, and then you uplift to a four manifold also times the cigar. So it's the same cigar. And so that becomes a six dimensional mm -hmm. uh, uh, story. Now, if I start in one plus one dimension with the Sigma model, these curves which we got with Kritschewer as a, as a kind of an answer uh, seem to be related to some kind of n equals two theories, but because there are infinite, infinite set of infinitely many such curves, the union probably corresponds to some high dimensional theory, maybe seven dimensional, but uh, uh, I'm not sure uh, exactly what. Mm -hmm. mm. Sorry, uh, well, yeah, I'm, okay, let, let, I better not make strong claims. So in, in, in case of Wheaton, by the way, one could introduce the Hamiltonians. So in, in, in fact, uh, so Chansamy's theory by itself is a kind of a quantum mechanics on the modular space of flat connections. On, on the Riemann surface, if, if your three manifold is the product of, of Riemann surface and, and line, uh, mm -hmm. but you couldn't, so and by itself, it's just a quantum mechanics with zero Hamiltonian, but you could introduce the Hamiltonian by introducing Wilson lines, which would be um, lying on the Riemann surface. So uh, they, they would act as Hamiltonians in, in, in this quantum mechanics. Mm -hmm. And so in this way, you can, trace uh, along, uh, of the connection, uh, monodromy along, along the Yes, trace of the monodromy connection. So it's a function, it's a function on the modular space of light connections. You can view it as a Hamiltonian function. Mm -hmm. And uh, some of them, so they could be lifted to, to Witten's story. So they would just correspond to uh, some kind of defects in the six dimensional theory. Okay, uh, all right. Uh, so maybe ask uh, uh, other uh, other questions from the audience because it turns out in a private conversation. <laughs> uh, uh, Actually, I, I, I cannot, because I'm sharing my screen. I don't see uh, how many people are left. <laughs> uh, no, no, no. Very, very, very few. Uh, okay. Very few are left. So we have kind of a strong audience. <laughs> uh, okay. So you, 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 you have post maybe just a couple of people. Okay. Uh, well. Uh, all right. If so there I'll, are, I'll send you the notes. Yes, please, uh, please, please email me the notes, and well, probably have a good night in Saint Petersburg. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Uh, all right. Uh, thank what you. What a pastor. Okay. Thank yeah, you very much. Water.